In this video I'd like to um, derive the law of sines for you. We'll uh, show how you use it in the next video. Um, I think it'll be interesting to hear this video because I notice out in the hallway there's um, someone playing a guitar rather nicely, but uh, we may have a little musical serenade in the background here. We'll see. Um, law of sines. This is um, section 2.1 in the trig book. Um, I want to start here with a triangle that is definitely not a right triangle. Okay, so I'm purposely drawing this, trying to draw that different than a right angle. I know it's a lot close to a right angle, but I'm hoping that maybe that's more than 90. Just different, something other than 90 degrees. The law of sines is going to work for any triangle, right? This is for any triangle. So here's what we do. We got We'll label our sides, our angles here, A, B, and C. And so then uh, each angle, I'm going to say the side opposite uses the little angle. So that's side little a over here, and opposite b is side little b, and across from side c is opposite little c. And you can tell the difference between my big c's and my little c's because my big c's are big and my little c's are little. So anyway, um, what I want to do is I want to find a relationship that's going to allow me to calculate some stuff knowing other stuff. So if I know maybe you know, a side and an angle or something. Can I get the rest of the information? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to take this triangle and cut it into two triangles. It's not a right triangle, but if I pick a, pick one of the vertices, just for argument's sake here, I'm going to pick B and I'm going to draw a perpendicular down to the other side there. Okay, so I'm going to drop an altitude of the triangle. That's perpendicular here. I'm going to give that a name. Um, Actually, the name I like to use for that side is um, H, because it looks kind of like what the side is. Anyway, um, I've now cut my triangle into two right triangles, and I can use some relationships that I know. So looking at the left-hand side here, I've got an angle A, an opposite side H, and an adjacent, no, that's the hypotenuse in this triangle here, it's C. Right? Um, so that little triangle, hypotenuse C, opposite side H, so I know that the sine and why am I in red? Let's go in blue. I want the sine of angle A to be H divided by C. I can multiply both sides by C and get that H is equal to A times the sine of C. No, it isn't. What the heck just happened there? Sorry, that was so weird. I was thinking about something else. <laughs> C times the sine of A. It's always good to be thinking about the same thing you're talking about because that way it comes out a little more correctly. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, look at the other half of the triangle. All right, I got a right triangle. I got a hypotenuse of little a and an opposite side. Well, this angle C, the opposite side is H there. So now I know that the sine of angle C is H divided by little a. It's the same H it was before. Let's solve for it again. I've got h is equal to a times the sine of c. Well, if h is equal to that, and h is equal to this, then that and this must be the same thing. So let's set them equal to each other. I have a times the sine of a. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder where I am. Uh, this is c times the sine of a is actually equal to a times the sine of c. There we go. This one equals that one. I think I've got it right. Now I'm going to um, I'm going to divide both sides here by both of those signs. So I'm going to divide by sine a and I'm going to divide by sine c. And as so as I do that, let's see, the, the sine A's will cancel out, so I've got C over sine C on this side, and I've got A over sine A on that side. And that is a C, let's make it look more like a C. Each, each fraction here has the sine of an angle and an opposite side, sine of an angle and an opposite side. Now, right now, I, I get thinking that, you know, if I were angle B and side B, I'd be feeling kind of left out at this point, you know. 
we made an arbitrary choice to begin with of dropping the perpendicular from B. I could have dropped the perpendicular from A. I could have dropped the perpendicular from C. Um, I made the choice of dropping it from B, and I got this relationship between A and C. If I had dropped it from C, I would have gotten a relationship between A and B that looked just like this. So the thing is, um, without doing the whole process again, I'm going to just state that this is equal to B over sine B. Okay. Now, um, this is what's called the law of sines. This is it. Law of sines. A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. Sometimes it's written in the reciprocal. Sometimes if you flip everything over, you'll see it as sine C over C equals sine B over B equals sine A over A. Whoops. This should be a little b. Big B, little b. What begins with b? Um, do you know? <laughs> Barber, babies, bubble, and a bumblebee. Anyway, that's um, Dr. Seuss. Yeah, I've got little kids. So, or I had little kids. They're not little anymore. Um, there we go. Law of signs written two different ways, um, depending on what we're going to do. Um, if we're solving, f if we're trying to figure out side lengths, I'd probably use these because all the side lengths are on top. I'm trying to figure out angles, and I'll probably use it like this because all the angles are on the top. I'll show you some examples in a subsequent video.